Dear student, up till now there have been two things you can do with vectors in Rn, adding and taking multiples. However, as you know from calculus for instance, in R2 and R3 there's much more to say about vectors. Vectors have lengths, you can talk about the distance between two vectors, and two vectors make a certain angle with each other. In particular, they may be perpendicular. Now wouldn't it be nice to have these concepts in Rn as well? Later on in the course we will use them to find, for instance, the line that fits the best to a cloud of points. For this we need to define what is the distance between a line and the set of points, and next to find the line which minimizes this distance. As you have seen in calculus, the geometric concepts length, distance and angle can be expressed using the inner product. To keep it simple, let's look at vectors in the plane. The inner product of A and B is defined as A1 times B1 plus A2 times B2. It is also called the dot product. The length of a vector A1, A2 equals the square root of A1 squared plus A2 squared, and this can be written as the square root of the inner product of A with itself. The distance between two vectors A and B is then the length of the vector B minus A, or A minus B. There is an equivalent geometric characterization of the inner product. Namely, A dot B is also equal to the length of A times the length of B times the cosine of the angle theta between A and B. From this it follows immediately that A and B are perpendicular if their dot product is zero. In fact, the angle theta is completely determined by three inner products. The generalization of length, distance and perpendicular to Rn is straightforward. The holy grail here the concept that provides it all is the inner product. Once we have this, we can define the geometry in Rn. The inner product of two vectors A and B in Rn is defined as A1, B1, plus A2, B2, etc., up to A and Bn. This can be written in a very concise way. The sum of the products is equal to the transpose of A times the vector B. From this definition, the following rules are easily deduced. A dot B equals B dot A, which is called symmetry. A dot B plus C equals A dot B plus A dot C, and a scalar vector K can be taken out of the inner product. Lastly, A dot A equals A1 squared plus A2 squared up to AN squared, a sum of squares, so A dot A is always non-negative, and it only equals zero if A is the zero vector. Now we can define the notions length, distance and perpendicular in Rn analogous to the formulas that we saw in R2. Only mathematicians have decided to come up with new designations and introduce the terms norm and orthogonal. Well, fasten your seatbelt, here we go. The norm of a vector A is defined as the square root of a dot a. And the distance between two vectors is the norm of the vector a minus b. Thirdly, we say that two vectors a and b are orthogonal if their inner product equals zero. So the norm denotes the length of a vector in Rn, and orthogonal is the word for perpendicular in this more abstract setting. I must confess that even teachers like me sometimes mix up the words. Many of the properties of length and distance simply carry over to Rn. To mention a few, the norm of R times A equals the absolute value of the number R times the norm of A. The distance between A and B equals the distance between B and A. Well, that's fine, isn't it? And the norm of A plus B is at most equal to the sum of the norms of A and B. The first properties follow immediately from the definitions and the rules of the inner product. The last inequality is known as the triangle inequality, and it is a bit tricky to prove it from the definitions. From a picture, it seems quite obvious. But 
as you ought to know, a picture is not a proof. Pythagoras' theorem also holds in Rn. It states that A and B are orthogonal if and only if the square of the norm of A plus B equals the sum of the squares of the norms. The formula may look unfamiliar. However, two pictures tell the story. You see how? The proof is surprisingly easy. Starting from the right, it is a proof without any smart ideas. First, the linearity of the inner product is used. Next, some terms cancel. Then you do some rewriting, where the symmetry property is used. And finally, use the definition of orthogonality. I recommend you to derive the formula that you see on this slide for yourself. And also to explain why it is called, oh there's that word, parallelogram rule. Parallelogram rule. Lastly, let us have a look at orthogonal projections. The projection of B onto the line generated by a non-zero vector A is the vector hat B in span A such that B minus hat B is orthogonal to A. You can look at the picture as if it is about vectors in Rn. So we have hat B equals C times A and the orthogonality requires that the inner product of B minus C A and A equals zero. The last equation can be rewritten to yield C. Note that the denominator is not equal to zero, since we assume that A is a non-zero vector. And finally, we have our ready-made formula for the orthogonal projection of B onto A. Thank you for your attention. Well, who wrote that line? I cannot read that. Goodbye.